So starting off with our capture panel, actually what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to turn a camera on because I have a camera tethered in with the USB 3 into uh, my laptop. I'm going to turn the camera on, just wait for that to uh, come on and connect to the software. What you'll see here in this panel is that the camera uh, or the operations of the camera become visible in this panel and we'll be able to now, as you can see, control the ISO. We can control the shutter speed, as you can see here, the aperture, and we can see the battery level. I can lock the mirror up. I can go to live view. I can uh, choose the metering mode, exposure, exposure value, uh, fine tuning on the focus. There's a number of things as well as obviously telling the camera to take a capture, which is the way I work when I'm using it tethered. So I've got complete control over the camera using this capture panel. Now, interestingly, you'll see on all of these uh, individual panels, such as camera, or job info, or exposure, you will see this extra icon that my mouse is touching here. If you click on that, it basically expands the panel out into its own separate floating panel. Now, I find this very, very useful because if I'm working in a dual screen setup, I can choose which panels I want on which screen and I can position my panels wherever I want them. So these floating panels are very, very useful. If you click the um, downward arrow here, this panel will disappear and it will dock itself back into the side menu, menu and if you click it again here it'll reappear here. So it's exactly the same as it is when it's in the main menu on the right but it's now just a floating independent panel. Now if uh, we look at the other panels um, moving further down obviously if the camera is sorry if the camera is not tethered and not connected, then this particular panel is not active because this is related purely to the camera. So I'm going to just turn the camera off again and we should see the information about the camera disappear from that panel momentarily. So moving down to the job info panel, um, this information is about where the destination of your image files is going to or coming from, uh, the name, the job sequence, the number sequence that you'd like to specify, uh, and also some additional metadata that you might want to apply with your copyright name, uh, website, that information, that sort of stuff uh, in there as well. So that's the job info panel. Now here's the main panel uh, that we're going to be using all the time, which is the exposure control panel. Uh, let's look at the main tools. We have uh, exposure value, which is quite simply uh, increasing or decreasing the exposure as we uh, feel uh, necessary. Contrast adjustment, brightness adjustment, recovery adjustment for recovering detail in the highlights. And we can recover an awful amount of detail in the highlights with the recovery adjustment. As a matter of fact, let's zoom in on this uh, tin of paint flying through the air here. Take a look at this tin and we can see that uh, it's a glossy metal tin. It's been caught in the studio lights and it's quite uh, brightly exposed because of that. But with the recovery detail, I can pull up the recovery and you can see I can start to re recover an incredible amount of detail back into those highlights using the recovery. And that is the beauty of working with the Hasselblad Focus raw files. Um, they're very advanced raw files with a lot of information, a lot of data that can be recovered from the highlights and shadows. So that's the recovery adjustment. I'll just leave that cranked up for a moment. We've also got shadow fill, so I can get a lot of detail out of my shadows. And you'll find in many low light situations or where you may be shooting interiors, architectural shots, you can actually recover a significant amount of shadow detail, the same with landscape shots, portrait shots, many different um, working scenarios. Um, the shadow, fill and recovery are excellent tools. Then we have clarity, which is like a local contrast adjustment, which basically just boosts uh, local contrast uh, as opposed to the general contrast a adjustment on here. So all of those tools are very useful. When you've made a number of adjustments to your image and you might want to see what they look like um, on and off quickly, you can just click this checkbox. And clicking that checkbox just deactivates 
the settings that you've put in temporarily. So you can just do a quick preview to see what it looked like before and after, if you like. And then in the drop down menu here, again, we can create a preset. So if you like the settings that you've applied, you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to regularly uh, require these settings. I'm going to regularly uh, want to use these particular settings because I shoot images in this particular fashion and I like the look. Then you can create your own preset to uh, save those particular settings.